Hey everybody, this is Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome to episode 5 of my Out of the Park Baseball 19 uh, GM Challenge with the Reds. And we are 25 games left in the season, and I am so shocked that I'm going to say this, but we are about to make a push for the playoffs. Um, our record is 77 and 60. We have continued to play well. Um, I'm still thinking we're going to fall short of winning the Central. We're four and a half right now behind Chicago. Um, but, man, I, I just can't believe how good we've been. When I started this series, when I took it on, and you know, I, I thought it was going to be uh, a huge challenge, I figured, you know, I think I've said before, a good record for this team first year would be 70 wins. You know, I think my owner had the goal of um, playing close to 500 ball, and we're going to eclipse that. I mean, we're four four wins away from 500 for the season, which is with 25 left. And uh, I'm just really surprised at how it's turned out. And I think a, a few things really have have made it happen. I think one was the manager change, obviously. I think another was the performance of the offense. Um, you can look at, these are just a few of the stats rankings. We are first in runs scored, first in batting average, second in on-base percentage, uh, second in stolen bases. The offense is really solid, has been solid all year, and we're getting some play from some guys who I really didn't expect to have the kind of year that they're having, and I'll show you that real quick here, here before we start simming, but... Um, the offense has definitely carry, carried us, and Nick Senzel, bringing him up when I did, I probably could have brought him up earlier the way he's played. Um, that was a big boost. And then making that trade for Mike, Michael Walker, even though uh, I think he's only up to five, maybe six wins right now, but it, there's no question that he helped solidify that, that pitching staff. But I'm going to look at standings first and see how we stack up with the rest of the, the league. Uh, you can see we are currently leading the chase for that National League wild card, and by a pretty large margin. I mean, we're three games up on Arizona, and looks like we're about five and a half or four and a half games up on Atlanta. Five and a half up, uh, well, that's probably six, eight and a half games up on uh, Milwaukee. So, I mean, we could definitely have a collapse down the stretch, but we're in a good spot for that playoffs. And you can see the, with the rest of the league, uh, no real surprises. Chicago is leading the way in the Central. Dodgers playing much better than the real-life uh, Dodgers this year. They have the best record in um, the National League. And then the Mets, I think, are, are a little bit of a surprise to me. Uh, they've been leading pretty much the whole way in the East, and Washington has really struggled this year. Philadelphia, they're a couple games below 500, so they're, you know, they're doing well in their rebuild, I think, in this playthrough. And then in the East, uh, the Red Sox leading the way. The big story there, though, is how bad uh, New York has struggled, but they're on a seven-game winning streak. It's possible they could get hot and compete for that wild card, but they've got a lot of ground to cover. Cleveland is running away with the Central. I mean, they're 20 games up, but they're, they've all but clinched it in the Central. And then Houston's gained some ground on the Angels, but I do think the Angels have a really good chance of making the wild card at least. Um, and in terms of individual performances, some shockers to me. A lot of guys here who I wouldn't expect to see. Matt Olson at Oklahoma, at Oakland is uh, leading the league in home runs. He, he has a lot of power and some pretty good potential, but I, I didn't expect him to show that much. Um, and then uh, David Price having an awesome year. James Paxton, 15 wins, having a great year too. And in the National League, uh, Cody Bellinger on pace for 50-plus home runs. Eric Hosmer, his average is down quite a bit, but he's still leading the league in uh, batting average at 324. Um, he's having a great year a great year in San Diego, his first there. And then Charlie Blackman having a really good year all together. I mean, he's top three in home runs, top three in RBIs, top three in batting average. So he's having a really good year and going to finish with some pretty monster numbers for him. And then Clayton Kershaw, um, 
U Darvish still having a good year, but Clayton Kershaw uh, at 19 wins already. So he's he stayed healthy. Looks like he's going to get 22 wins or, or so in this playthrough. So he's having a great year. Individually, I um, wanted to take a look at the pitching staff. I've caught up a lot of guys in September. Um, I called up Garrett again. DePaula called him back up. And uh, Kevin Shackerford I called back up. But it looks like Girardi's going to stay with that starting rotation. Um, Michael Walker, he has five wins now for us. And he's been, I think, really solid. A good, good whip. Um, yet to lose a game and a 343 ERA. Definitely better than anything really we had in that pitching staff. But uh, Molly is already up to 12 wins. And he's been, God, he's been really tough. Or he's had a rough stretch these last three games. But overall, he's, he's had a pretty good year. And um, Chad Green, he has 17 saves. He has some great stuff, but I don't know if long term if he'll be uh, the closer answer for me. But um, I think he's still the best option that I have. And then in the lineup, this is definitely what's carrying us. Joey Votto, his average is down quite a bit, but you know what you're going to get with him. A lot of walks, good power production. Uh, Scooter Jeanette's having a a good solid year. Nixon's at all again. I, I think he's outperforming my expectations. He was also, he's, uh, since the last sim, he's won another Rookie of the Month award for August. I don't know if he's going to have the plate appearances or whatever and the final numbers to make, uh, to get that award, but I think he's got a good chance. And then Jesse Winker has really turned it on and uh, he's at 295 right now. He's having a solid offensive year, and I think he's, uh, overall, my scout has boosted his overall and potential ratings as the year's gone on. His offensive ratings are really solid, uh, so good chance he's going to stick around. And then Shebler really has been productive. Um, he's at 29 home runs right now. He's on pace for 30-plus and 100-plus RBIs, so he's a good production from him. And then... Um, Billy Hamilton, he's an exciting player to watch. I've said that before. He's got great speed, great defender, but he's having a much better year uh, than I would have expected. His average is up to 286. It's fluctuated between there and 300 even at times. He's already got 112 runs scored for the year. He's he's going to potentially haven't looked at the, the leaderboards and runs, but I bet he's up there if not leading the league. And at 76 stolen bases, I don't see him getting too close to 100 stolen bases, but 90 might be a, a good shot. So he's, he's having a great year. And then looking at overall um, statistics, definitely that offense. I mean, we're top five in almost every category except extra base hits and first in several. But in the pitching side, uh, when I started the year, when I got through maybe a month or so of the playthrough, uh, maybe that first episode or two, we were down around 13, 14, 15th in a lot of these categories. And now you can see, except for the home runs allowed, we've kind of moved up to 10th in a few, 11th, 12th. So it's still not great, but it, it, it has been improvement. And um, the record... You throw out May, and we have been above 500 every month, which has been, again, that was just uh, a big surprise. Uh, well, March, we were 1-1 one in one in just the two games that we had there. So that's, I'm surprised even at the consistency. But, man, I, I just hope that we can fin finish this season off. Um, you look at the pennant chase for us, um, Looks like the Cubs have a little bit better chance against the, the remaining schedule. Uh, it's 464 winning percentage, whereas what we're looking at is 475. Uh, we got 12 at home, 13 away. They're 13 at home, 13 away. So we're about even there. And then for the wild card, um, Arizona is going to have a tough time of it, even though they got 15 at home. Uh, the winning percentage of their remaining schedule is pretty high. 
And then uh, Atlanta, same deal. Both those guys, both those teams are going to be playing some pretty tough schedules down the road. But uh, I think that's all I wanted to showcase before we get started. we got 25 games, so we're going to play it out and see how it works. Um, get this started against Pittsburgh on the road. And looks like we won the series, and uh, we're 79-63. and 63. So it looks like uh, we won that first one three to one. Finnegan had a great game for him. Green picked up his 17th save. Uh, Profar, who has been playing a little bit better, I picked him up when um, the starting shortstop got hurt. And then in the second game, how did that one go? Waka picked up his first loss, actually. Uh, not a great outing for him. And then. We lost 5-6 uh, in extra innings. Um, it's pretty decent offensive performances, though. It looks like Senzel, his average is down to 291. He might have hit a skid there. And then we won that first game against San Diego 8-5 to at home. Uh, Joey Votto, a good game. Senzel did come back 3-4, for four, scored 2, drove in 2. And then Castillo got his 10th win. Six pretty solid innings, nine strikeouts. Green, his 18th save. And then we lost five to six um, in the second game. Sinzel was two for four though, so he's maybe he's up and down. Maybe just had a, a tough series there against Pittsburgh. Molly pitched a pretty decent game, but uh, her get lost it in um, extra innings there or, or in the bullpen. Let's see if there's anything to check out here. And Chicago White Sox looks like they got rid of some of their uh, their coach and the manager and uh, Cleveland is already clinched so that wasn't too big of a surprise so let's see how we finish out this series and we did manage another win uh, but it looks like we've lost some ground to Chicago let me let me look at the uh, notes here first JD Martinez had three home runs in a game Houston made it to the postseason Pirates are out uh, Lindor was player of the week. He's had a great, great year. And then Starling Marte, he uh, he was player of the week in the National League. And Daniel Murphy has been out for Washington. Uh, that may have hurt their chances a little bit. And then the power rankings, we're at ninth. So we've kind of been uh, from middle of the pack in the start of the year. We've kind of been in that top ten now since uh, since we got into August and September. Let's see what we finished, how we finished that series out. So we lost uh, a really tough one, four to five in extra innings. Uh, not much going on there offensively. But pitching-wise, Finnegan, another pretty decent game. Seven innings, three runs. Uh, Lorenzen, though, lost it in, in, ex in the extra innings there. But we finished the series winning five to two. Peraza had a good uh, good game for him. And he's, he's actually uh, been pretty productive overall um, averages up to 286 got some good speed good defense uh, for the most part and looks like Walker didn't pick up the win but he came back and had a fairly decent outing just two runs in five innings but Green picked up his 19th save so now looking at the standings after this week uh, we're still a game and a half up over Arizona Atlanta's catching up a little bit but they've lost four in a row looks like uh, we split the last 10 games five and five Arizona, though, they they won four in a row. And anywhere else, uh, Houston, they're, they're starting to pull away from the Angels. And uh, Boston, close to clinching. Uh, magic number down to eight. Los Angeles, they're, close, they're closest to clinching of the remaining teams with just five on their magic number. But now we've got a series going on against uh, Los Angeles. It is at home and then at Chicago. So let's see how we get through this week. Lost the first one, lost the second one, lost the third one big, and now, oh my gosh, now it happens. Uh, Nick Senzel out for two to three months. And that, uh, I don't know if that's going to end our playoff chances, but man, that's so tough to see. So now he's going to be off. For the remainder of the year, 
when it rains it pours, I guess. But we were really just decimated in that series. Um, some good offensive performances here in this game. Looks like uh, Hamilton had a good game to start the series off. Giardo stunk it up pitching wise, and then we lost the segment three to eleven. Uh, not much um, offensively, although Shebler did pick up his 100th RBI. Castillo was okay, but the bullpen uh, was shaky and and wind up lost, losing that one for us. And then five to seventeen. That's uh, that's really terrible. Winker was three for five, had a good offensive game. Scooter Jeanette, he he was okay, all those averages down to 295 now. But uh, Molly, whoo, eight runs, six earned, and three and two thirds. And then Jared Hughes uh, on the back end, four earned runs in an inning. So not good. Um, and looks like uh, the Dodgers are in. And Murphy is out again, four to five weeks. So they they swept us and won their series. But who can I call up now to try and replace um, Sinzel? I mean, in we don't really have a whole lot there in that middle infield. Uh, I guess Profar could potentially play short and Peraza moves over to no Peraza can't play third uh, I'm just going to see how Girardi handles it yeah he puts Profar at third I figured that was what he would have to do but I don't really see any point in moving up some of these guys because uh, I mean Alex Landino just doesn't have the contact rating to to hit it, but I, I mean he can play a little bit there, but um, yeah, I think I'll call it Blandino and see what uh, kind of depth that gives us. So. Big blow, though, right there. So now we're going to be at Chicago. And we lose that first one 3-8. to eight. Now Shebler's out. He's out for the remainder of the regular season and uh, more than likely won't be able to help out if we do get to the playoffs. Colorado's out now. I don't know if there's anyone. Probably don't expect anyone at this point to be on the waiver wire, but... Um, and I don't think there's any outfielders I could pick up that would make a difference at this point. So, in in Triple A, Herrera. Again, I mean, he would give me some depth. I mean, that's about the best I can hope for at this point. And yeah, he puts him in it right, all automatically. I would I would think Stevenson would have a better chance at. Uh, well, no, he's he's not rated too highly at, at right. So we lost that first one three to eight. Um, looks like Finnegan got pushed around a little bit there in his two innings. So let's see if we can right right the ship here. Lost again and lost again. <laughs> So uh, we were shut out 2-0. Um, Waka, a good game, but didn't really matter in that one. So I think now is when now is when it happens. This is when we lose it. But we're at 80 wins. Um, you have those kind of injuries. There's not a whole lot you can do to really come back from that. Looks like Manny Machado was player of the week in the American League, uh, Tommy Pham in the National League. Um, weekly power rankings we're already now 18th Rangers out of the playoffs and we are just a half game uh, we're tied with Arizona but we're just a half game above Atlanta and we are on a six game losing streak about to play at Milwaukee and um, at Miami uh, unfortunately they're both on the road but maybe we'll have a good chance here not looking too good, though. Those are two big injuries to, to have to overcome.
So, for, yeah, we'll, so we did, we did win, uh, looks like we split those six games there. Uh, let me see. So we won the first game at Milwaukee, nine to three. Hamilton's starting to struggle too. His average is down to 279. Uh, some okay offense, but Castillo, the big, the big performer there, uh, seven and a third, no runs, his eleventh win. Then we lost three to six. Winker flirt with three hundred. He's up to two eighty, two ninety eight now. And Molly picked up his tenth loss. He's really, after pitching really well there in August, uh, he's kind of, I think it was August, but well, no, it was July. He's he's been struggling for the last couple months. And then we lost one to seven, uh, big blow there. It looks like Finnegan, uh, his eighth loss, and DePaul had looked bad in the bullpen. Looking at the news, uh, Odor had three home runs. Baltimore out, Royals out, and Cubs won the Central. No surprise after that losing streak. Giardo wants to talk contract extension. Um, probably not interested at this point and Adam Jones on a 20 game inning streak Boston wins and San Diego's out Philadelphia's out Washington out San Francisco out but we did okay so we we won the first game at Miami 3 nothing uh, Hamilton good game for him at the top of the lineup um, Waka picked up his sixth game for us, so he's six and two for us, thirteen wins overall. And then we lost big, nine to sixteen. Um, Jeanette, pretty decent game offensively, but Giardo, eight runs, uh, three innings. Shackford got hammered, just a third of an inning, five runs. DePaulo's looking bad, but we won two to one in that last uh, last game that we just sent. Jeanette was three for four. Hamilton scored a run. And Castillo picked up his 12th win. Green is 21st save. Castillo has looked pretty good overall, I've got to say. 27 starts, a 368 ERA. Um, he's a potential, OSA likes him a little bit better. They got him a three and a half star potential. It's just his movement scares me a little bit. That usually equates to a lot of home runs. But he's probably going to be still in arbitration this year so I, I plan on having him around and let's see we got one more game against Miami to end this series and we win five to four so uh, Hamilton's still struggling a little bit Jeanette though a good game for him and Profar three for four Tyler Molly picked up his 13th win and he finally had a good outing for me uh, six innings two earned runs green his 22nd save he seems to be having a pretty good run right now in September. 257, uh, six saves this month. And let me look at the news again. Let's see. Austin Hedges, three home runs. But players of the week, Odor in the Nat American League, and VR, Jonathan Villar, or I think you say it that way. He was in the National League. And um, we have moved up to eighth now on the power rankings. And, um, man, Victor Arano for Philadelphia keeps showing up here on some awards. He had a great year at Reading. But standings now, 84 and 73. And, again, I'm not going to sweat this season too much. Um, that is way up beyond what I thought we would do. But it is going to be close. No question it's going to be close. Uh, we are currently a half game up on Arizona and Atlanta. So it's with, uh, what is that, six to play? It's going to come down to, to these three teams. And we're going to finish two games at home with Kansas City and then three at home against Pittsburgh. So I kind of like the schedule, but let's see. This is going to be it's going to be tough. And we do win the first one, 5-1. Okay, so Sal Romano, I forgot about him. Uh, 
I'm going to call him up. There's two games left, but see what that would do. Yeah, he puts him uh, He puts him in the, the pitching. Hmm. Kind of surprised about that, but he put him in there. So we won 5-1. to one. That gives us 85 wins for the year. Um, Peraza, great game at short. Winker, a good game. And Finnegan pitched amazingly well. Uh, 11 strikeouts, no earned runs, and 6 and a third. I just wish his other, I mean, he has three solid pitches. I just wish his movement and control would get a little bit better. And then news-wise, let's see. Um, Astros won the American League West. Oakland is out. And standings, how the other teams do. So it looks like we're up a game and a half now. So I'm going to sim it a game at a time here. Oh, we lost five to six. Not good, but it looks like uh, Arizona and Atlanta also lost. Um, Scooter Jeanette had a good game, two for four, drove in three. But Waka, wow, he was rocked again. Six six runs in six or three innings. The bullpen actually was scoreless. And Detroit's out of the playoffs. Another Philly there got a minor league award. Uh, so. We're coming up on that last series against Pittsburgh, and how does it look? So we're a game and a half up on Atlanta, and two games up on Arizona. Whew. How about that for close? Um, so first game with Pittsburgh, who, who really handled this their last series, six to two. So we're. So we're up 6-2 to two on that one. That's a great game. Hamilton, a pretty good game. Uh, Dilson Herrera looked pretty good and coming off the bench. Uh, Castillo picked up his 13th win, five innings, eight strikeouts, just one earned run. So a pretty good year for him overall. And standings, we haven't clinched yet, but we're two, on, two up on Arizona, two and a half on... Atlanta. This could clinch it if we win. Ah, oh, we lost six to nine. And but it doesn't matter. We're in. Wow. I'll look at that in a minute. But Hamilton's still struggling. I guess he misses Senzel in the lineup. I'm not sure. Uh, Molly, a pretty bad game. Iglesias lost it uh, there in the bullpen. But. Verlander picked up his 200th win, but can you believe this? We actually made the playoffs in our first year. I, it's just the wild card, but I'm really stunned. 86 wins. Uh, we're gonna have a tough time of it because we lost some big players on that offense. But holy cow, uh, that's incredible. So let's just finish out the season here. Last game of the year, we win four nothing, and. How about that? We had a pitcher of the month, Luis Castillo. That's incredible. But we ended with a shutout, 87 wins on the year. I cannot believe that. Um, Winker finished strong for the year, uh, just short of 300. But, man, he, he had a good year. Um, Votto's average went down the tank in that second half of the year. Uh, matter of fact, if you look – June 258, July 268, 265 in August 250. So, uh, he had a pretty rough stretch there in the second half of the year. But uh, Romano looks like he didn't get much uh, going there. But 87 and 75, that's how we finish. Uh, Seattle looks like they're in. I'll look at that in a minute. I'm going to check out the player update real quick. Uh, you guys here in the pitching looks like they lost some ratings didn't it doesn't surprise me molly though uh picked up a couple of things looks like his movement may have gone up a little bit and uh, control went up a little bit and then jimmy herget he uh went up quite a bit i think he was used a lot this year 95 games um i still like this guy in the bullpen i think next year he'll probably be another part of the team. Amir Garrett 
his control went up, but not much. Herrera, and then Senzel, his contract or contact went up to 17 now. Uh, but he's only a four-star potential now. But still, solid, solid first year for him. Uh, hopefully, he won't turn into uh, an injury risk. Uh, looks like Profar went up a, a couple things there. He might be a good option as a utility player to keep around for next year. Peraza picked up a couple things, not much. Winker, though, looks like he lost. Uh, his power went down. And then looking through in the minors, no huge movement that I'm seeing there, but a little bit of uh, movement for, for a couple players. Uh, so for the monthly awards, Francisco Lindor finished strong. He won the batter of the month for the American League. In the National League, it was Cody Bellinger, who finished with 57 home runs. Uh, didn't quite see him hitting that high this year. Garrett Cole was the pitcher of the month for Houston in the American League. And then Castillo in the National League. And no wonder, 5-0 and in six starts. I, I knew he was doing pretty good. I didn't know he had that kind of a, a month. But a 151 ERA... So it's nice to end on a high note with that pitching staff, as bad as it's been this year. Um, rookies of the Month, Jake Bowers and Acuna, uh, or Acuna in uh, Atlanta. And weekly power rankings were 10th. And if there's anything more here to look at. So let's take a look at the standings, how they, how they finished up. Uh, Boston wins the East. Cleveland wins big in the Central. Astros win pretty big, well, really big, really, in the West. And it's going to be the Angels and the Mariners in, in the wild card for them. Uh, Stanton finished with 53 home runs. Olsen with 51, so a lot of power there. And even Trout, 48 home runs. Um, that's kind of unexpected from him, too. And then for the pitching side, Paxton, 18 wins. Corey Kluber, 248 strikeouts, uh, 15 wins. He had a good year. And saves, anything going on there. 46, Blake Parker. Ken Giles had a good year at Houston. And then batting was a little little off, I think, in terms of average this year in the National League. Blackman wound up winning over Hosmer, who he really started out strong, you can see, but he was 239 in July and 242 in September, 278 in August. So he stumbled a little bit in the second half. Uh, Cody Bellinger, Jock Peterson, those guys had monster years home run-wise. Uh, Joey Votto did wind up with 120 RBIs, which um, is a career high for him. Um, but stumbled a lot in the second half of the season. And then pitching-wise, Clayton Kershaw, 22 wins. Wood, who I did not uh, trade for, so instead I got Waka. He, he finished with 20 wins. Strong year for him. Uh Scherzer had 276 strikeouts, 18 wins, another solid year from him. And then Syndergaard was the leader in wins above replacement. Um, he might have a good chance at the uh, Cy Young. And then Canley Jansen, 41 saves, led the league again uh, in that category. He's a great, great reliever. So that's how it's going to look. Uh, Dodgers, Mets, Cubs won their divisions, and then Atlanta was just two games shy of making it. Arizona, well, no, they're going to go. Let me finish that because it looks like that's going to be a playoff situation. And so it's going to be either Atlanta or so a nice achievement there. Got to set our playoff roster, and Atlanta is going to be the team we play. So they must have uh, finished with 86 wins. So they topped Arizona by a game. Just two games separating all of us. But man, what a year. Um, so now I'm going to have to get ready for that wild card game. And I'll probably do what I've done in the past. I'll play that one out. And uh, so I'll show off a little bit of the 3D gameplay again. Um, and I think, you know, we were 6-4 and four down the stretch. So we didn't completely collapse after those two big injuries, but anything can happen in a one-game playoff. That one, um, 
I'll, I'll accept whatever the outcome is. I just don't know how deep we could possibly go into the playoffs with that pitching staff. But it, it has been an exciting year, though, a good ride. It's going to make building the team up a little bit tougher, I think, going forward because um, it's a little bit too much success too early, I'm afraid. And I think the owner's expectations might have just ramped up a bit. It's going to be hard to get some good high draft picks next year and uh, beyond. And then offensively, a, a lot of guys are going to have to duplicate what they did in that first half of the year, and that, that might be tough. Um, so offseason is going to be tough to figure out what we're going to do, but we're going to have to go through the playoffs first. But as always, thanks for watching, subscribing, and supporting, and I hope you like the series, and uh, I'll see you next episode when we take on the Braves.